Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Smarter Every Day. My name is Syed and today I decided to make a video on change management, just like I did it last time for incident management. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all my viewers who liked the video and who found the video was very informative. And thank you so much for watching it and continue watching uh, to my uh, videos and this time it will be for change management. All right, so guys, I want to make this video short, so I will try my best to keep as simple as I can. And no, this will go a little longer, no matter how much I try. My whole purpose is to make sure that you all understand what is change management, right? Change management in ITIL is, uh, falls into one of the life cycle called service transition. Uh, in service transition, we have five processes or six, you know, the older version have five and newer version have six. They have you know, divided change management into change management and change validation, right? So what does we? What are the five processes in service transition? We have transition planning and support. That's one. Change management, number two. Release and deployment management, number three. Knowledge management, number four. Uh, service assets and configuration management, right? So these are the five processes, right? Now, what does a change what is what is the definition of a change? I'm, I'm sure you all uh, must be aware of the change definition from my last video. That is any any addition, modification, or removal of an existing CI is called a change. And what is a CI? CI is a configuration item. Anything in your organization that has a tag or a bar that can be tracked down uh, in your CMDB, for example, any table, chairs, computers, your uh, anything that is tagged with a number and your organization knows where it is and which department it belongs to is called a configuration item. So any addition, modification or deleting, deletion of an existing CI is called a change or any addition, modification, deletion of uh, a CI that is affecting IT services is called a change, right? Now, what is change management? Anything that controls the behavior of the change, anything that uh, <clears throat> allows you to perform a proper standard process to control the changes that are happening in your environment is called change management process, right? So I will explain it to you in a high level what is change management and uh, process and a detailed version of change management process quickly <clears throat> without, excuse me, without any um, delays. But before we go ahead and understand, one should understand what, how does a change management or change can uh, help organization. So there are many things in the change management that one should understand is how we can successfully implement a change and the success, the success rate of the change can be achieved uh, compared to the change failures. When you're putting a lot of tasks, a lot of efforts to implement a change, we need to make sure there are successful changes, right? So what is the purpose of the change? The purpose of the change is to control all the changes in the habit, to, to control the life cycle of all the changes that are happening in the environment. That is one of your purpose. The second purpose of your uh, change management is to reduce or to minimize the business impact, right? So how does a business impact, impact play a role? I will let you know when we are doing a change management process, right? Anything that's broken, anything that requires an addition or a modification or a removal of what is running fine is called a change in the change management, right? How does it uh, cause an impact? How does it help you? Say there are some old servers, right? And they are supposed to uh, be descoped in by 2015, but then they are still working on it, but you know, they're still working and you need to have that change, right? So this was already discussed and this was supposed to be changed in 2016. Say exam for example, we did that, right? So when when this server was implemented, when this new server was bought in the year 2009, maybe for six years and after that, we were supposed to descope and we brought in the new change, a new server in replacement of this. This is a standard change. So I will come to the types of changes also, but a small example of standard change is anything that does not require approval to implement that because it's already pre-approved or authorized, pre-authorized is called a standard change, right? So we have three types of changes guys so we have standard change we have normal change we have emergency change we also have retrospective change right so what is a standard change it's a pre-approved change or a pre-authorized change that does not require often approval 
So this change, how can you identify it? The success rate of this change in the last nine, three months should be 95%, right? So which means you this change in is frequent in the nature, um, like server patches, right? The patching of the servers, you you know it is needed for the security of the servers, the, the, the security, uh, you know, the, to make sure the servers are healthy, the servers, um, the service does not have any degradation while they're working and stuff like that right so we you will see in the environment a lot of patching keeps happening and that does not require approval because they're already pre-approved uh changes there these are all pre-approved standard changes so that does not require another a layer of approval right so this is the standard changes just remember standard changes are nothing but pre-approval or pre-authorized changes for example if I have to, um, you know, do this in uh, explanatory in a simple term, for example, any organization uh, that you're working in, you will see in your cafeterias, there is um, um, a water cans, right? A lot of people drink water in it. And if you see on the water cans, right, there will be a bar, you know, which says this aqua guard or this water cooler is, you know, uh, belong belongs to this organization, this company, XYZ. It is in this block, it is in this floor, and hence the name XYZ B23, something like that, right? So this is how a CI is stacked. This is how this is a configuration item. For example, that water cooler or that you know uh, excuse me, the water can over there is 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 now empty, right? A lot of people drink water, now it's empty. Now, what happens is the facility watches that and they go ahead and refill the water. Now, this is a change. This is this is a modification of what it was there, right? So the water was there and now it's empty. Now you're refilling it. Now it does not require a further approval for a facilities team to go and talk to the managers and the, you know their, their managers saying there's no water and stuff like that. It's a pre-approved change. It's just given to them. Uh, authorization is given to them. Hey, go ahead and... Um, Go ahead and um, you know refill the water. This is a standard change, just like that. Like how I explained it to you in um, in in your uh, technical background. If there are server patching that's happening, which is a standard pre-approved changes, right? So, uh, having said that, moving on to uh, a normal change. What is a normal change? Let's take this. Normal change is nothing but a well-planned change. A change that's already been discussed, a change that requires a downtime, the change that people have discussed together on a platform and they said this change is important, why it is important, who will be responsible for it, who are the teams that are needed and what is the downtime and when will it be implemented, what is the output of the change or what is the return of the change and how critical it is. So this is a planned change, is nothing but a normal change, right? A standard change is a pre-approved change or a pre-authorized change. A normal change is a well-planned change with the downtime and proper approvals. Next comes an emergency change. What is an emergency change? Emergency change by the name itself, it indicates that during an, a break-fix situation, during uh, an, a high priority major outages, uh, high priority incidents, if you require any changes to be needed, then you cannot wait for the approvals to come in play because during major incident management, you have an SLA of 120 minutes or maybe 90 minutes for P0s or P1s. You have very less time to fix the outage or fix the broken um, part that's causing an impact to the whole business, right? So in, in such situations, you implement an emergency change with a verbal approval. A verbal approval will be from the DPEs or the global PE project executives or delivery project executives or even service delivery managers and sometimes even major incident managers, right? They give them a pre-approval changes, which means that they don't have enough time to play that. They, they, they don't have enough time to get approvals from XYZ people. Just go ahead and give a verbal approval. Go ahead and implement anything that can help us uh, fix the issue as soon as possible, right? That's an emergency change. Now, there is something also called uh, a retrospective change. Now, before I come to retrospective change, emergency change is always associated, if not always, most of the time, 90% of the time, this emergency change is associated with a high priority incidents. If you see there's a P1 running and if you see an emergency change, they get connected to it or attached to it or associated with, with it, which means they have implemented something, they have modified anything, they maybe they have they've added something 
uh, they have deleted something for an existing CI, maybe they have added space, maybe they have rebooted a production server, um, um, maybe maybe they they um, uh, added a new, new NAS drive, anything during the change to recover is an emergency ticket, right? So this is associated with the high priority instance. Now moving on to the retrospective change, this is similar to emergency change, nothing new about it. It's only this time, this emergency change ticket will be a new change ticket which will be uh, documented a little later on as a new change itself. It won't be an emergency change. It will be a retrospective change. The word retrospect means, which me means that the change is already implemented in the past. Now you're documenting it retrospectively. That's why the word retrospective change. It's more or less an emergency change itself. All right, guys. So I hope it, it makes sense to you, the types of changes and uh, you know what is emergency and the difference between emergency and retrospective change clear right um, now having said that now let's quickly move on to um, change management i will start off again with the definition uh, with an itil it's under service transition we have change management right now uh one more thing I want to talk about in service transition, like I said, there are five processes. Quickly, I want to rehash this. It's important that you know this. We have transition, uh, planning and support, change management, release and deployment management, knowledge management, and service asset and configuration management. In ITIL, there are 26 processes altogether. And which is, if there is a question, and if you are an ITIL expert or even a foundation certified, if, if you want to know this, which is one such process that interlocks, which talks to all of the processes within 26 processes is configuration management, right? That's one of the processes within service transition is configuration, config management is one process that is interlocked with all 26 processes. And under service transition, we also have change management, right? See, even here, CI, and during the change management, any addition, modification, deletion of an existing CI, configuration management, right? Configuration item is called a change. Right, we, I will do configuration management uh, process a little later also. I want a, a new video by itself, probably I, when I get enough time. I want to do change management. A lot of people have requested for change management, right? Now let's go um, quickly start off with high level of change. Um, high level process of change management so that you understand and then I will move on to the uh, detailed version of change management with an example, just like I did for incident management, right? Okay, guys, so I'll go a little slow so that you understand. A high level change management has five steps, just simple five steps, right? If you understand this, you will understand change management. One is request for change, right? Change approval. Second is change approval. Third is implementation of the change. Fourth, fourth is validation of a validation or testing of a change. And fifth is a closure. Simple as that, right? Just like in incident management, I showed you the process. This is the five process of change management. High level request for a change, change approval. Excuse me. Um, implementation of the change, validation or testing of a change, then the closure of the change. These are the five major steps of change management. And this five steps, I'm talking about the normal well-planned change. Remember, a planned change is called a normal change, right? Now, now that I have said that, I'll give you an example, a small example. Say, uh, request for a change, right? Say you have your bike, right? Say you have... Uh, Activa, right? Now you realize that there is the the tire that you have in Activa Honda, right? Um, you know it's pretty old, right? Say let, let's say, let's say your Activa Honda is about ten years old bike, right? Now you want to replace the the tire uh, because it's often getting you know you often you often see that the, the, you have a flat tire and so on and many reasons to it. And now you decided to change to a new tire. Right now, you go to a mechanic or you you go to a shop who has all the tires with different brands. Right, so you're requesting him for a change, saying that I want to replace my uh, tire of my Activa Honda. He says, okay, fine. Now he is going to give you options. So do you want uh, MRF tire? You want CA tire, and you want XYZ tire, and so on and so forth. While he's explaining that to you, he's also going to talk to you about what are the benefits of the change or benefits of those tires, right? But you end up saying, listen, I am worried about the risk that is involved in it, right? So which is the best tire that helps me save my life, which helps me 
you know which is a reliable that can sustain for a long time and that can work that can you know that will not give me problem for uh, very often and you know I want a good reliable tire right so he will give you an option and you select MRF tire and you're approving for that change you are he's asking you with an option he's giving you the benefits you and you give back him the you know uh, the things that you need you decide the risk out of it and you finally come to a conclusion and you approve it saying that yes go ahead take the MRF tire change it right now when he's changing it he's going to make sure everything how it was before he's noted down somewhere right um, he's noted down somewhere and uh, you know, just in case if the tire doesn't fit the bike, then he wants to go back to the original tire how it was, right? So that just in case, you know, if the tires are not fitting and, you know, you want to go back home saying that just make my bike how it was looking before and, you know, it doesn't seem to be good one what you're putting in my bike right now. So he can go back, right? This is a back out plan. I will come to it a little later. Now, once you have requested for a change and discussed and decided and you have approved for a change now is implementing a change he's implementing you know he's replacing a tire once he has completed doing that then he's going to ask you sir can you go quickly take a test drive and come back to me and say if this tire looks okay to you right so once you go ahead and you test drive and you find everything is fine and you love the tire and you know you love the com comfort of the tire and you know it's fine and smooth you say yes it's perfectly fine thank you so much you close it you close the conversation you tell him thank you you pay him and come back right that's the closure remember the five steps that i just told you request for a change change approval which you just gave him then he implemented right he changed the tire fourth you validate it and you test it and finally you close the conversation you paid him the money for the tire and you came back that's the closure of the change simple Simple, right? I mean, this is how, what is change? This is a normal change, right? A standard change, let's take the same example quickly. Same Activa Honda, 10 years down the line, you were supposed to, uh, you know, uh, replace the tire. Now the Activa Honda person is going to come to your house. He's going to replace the tire. He doesn't need your approval because that require, that that has been already discussed and pre-authorized by you. And, you know, he just goes, comes to your doorstep and that's how the service they're providing it. He will replace the tire and he goes back home, right? And this is what he does door to door, right? I mean, this is how a pre-authorized change is coming place, right? This is a standard change. Now we discuss about well-planned change, right? Now normal change, now emergency change. For example, you're just going somewhere and you have a flat tire, right? And that is something now you cannot call Honda and say that, listen, I, I need a new tire and you need to go ahead and you, I want you to come here and fix my tire and, you know, I just want to go back to the place that I wanted to go back and, you know, um, I, I need I need approval. No, Honda person is not going to come and sit there sit there and say, sir, let me take approval from somebody to come over there and all of that. He, all he's going to tell you, sir, take it to the nearest uh, uh, mechanic. He's going to replace the tire or probably he's going to fix your flat tire. You can go back to the place where you want. Probably you can come back to us later on and we will fix it. Now, in that situation, an emergency change has been taken. Emergency change has been implemented, which means he is going back to um, he's going to the mechanic shop and emerge on an emergency. He's going to um, fix the tire and he goes, he, you know, back to his way. Right. That's an emergency change. A retrospective change is same. Just in case, you know, he's going to go back home and he's going to write an email to the Honda saying that I did this. This is a retrospective change. Right. An emergency change, he might just have to call them. And when he's going back home, he's writing an email to the Honda sir, Honda showroom saying that, <coughs> excuse me, Honda showroom saying that this is what happened and this is what I did. Right. This is a retrospective change. So you understood the high level uh, process of change. All right. Now, moving on to a uh, very important aspect of the change. During a change, there is, remember the butterfly effect or the butterfly diagram for incident management and merit. This is something, this is not something new in, 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 uh, invention in change management. This, is, this has been there for a long time. There are seven R's during this planned change. Seven R's, the letter R, right? Um, R for Romeo. Now, you need to remember the seminars. If you are a change manager, you need to ask these questions. Who raised the change? First, number one, who raised the change? Second, who is uh, 
responsible for this change? Who raised the change? Who is responsible for the change? Who is the, uh, what is the return or the output of the change? Number three, right? Then how many resources do you need to Im implement this change, right? What is the risk involved in this change, right? Then uh, you will also, uh, the last R is to, you will check the relationship of the change. If there are multiple changes, you will ask uh, the application or the requester for the change. Do you, you have multiple changes in the environment. Do you want, uh, do you, would you, would you mind explaining, are these changes related, the relationship of the changes, right? One, like I said, um, the seminars, let me just quickly rehash that to you. I wrote it somewhere so that it's easier for you all to understand. Just give me one second. Yeah, so like I said, one is the reason for the change. Uh, sorry, one is who, who raised the change, then the reason for the change, then what is the return, the output of the change, what is the risk involved for this change, then who are the resources that are needed for this change, then uh, who is responsible for implementing the change, and what is the relationship of the change, right? Hope you all got it. The seven R's are very, very important. Right. As a change manager, you need to have these details with you. Only then you will be able to approve the final approval on the tool. I'll come back to that, right? The final approval, when I say, there'll be lots of approval that would happen during the change, uh, during a normal change, uh, critical changes. You know, even changes have been divided or, um, you know, they have two different types of changes. One is um, proactive change. One is a reactive change. Proactive change is probably something that, you know beforehand that it's going to happen and like i said active attire and you know after 10 years it has to be replaced and you know you proactively do that so you end up um, you end up getting it that getting that done and plus you know it is a minimal cost right this is a proactive a reactive change is something that that something is broken down and you need to react according to the situation right so again the changes these are the I'm not talking about the types of changes. Yes, you have proactive changes and reactive changes. In the types of changes, you have standard, normal, emergency, and retrospective, right? Just understand the word proactive and reactive, right? Um, moving on to, like I said, seven R's, a change, ma change manager should know this, seven R's, right? If he goes for an interview, this is one of your questions, that what are the seven R's of change management, right? Now, high level also you understand, understood, right? Request for a change, change approval, implementation of the change validation and testing and the closure right once this is complete then you will probably move on how to uh, implement the change in the real time world in the real world right let, let me take a quick example and all right uh, i hope you all can see my screen so i'm going to quickly clear it uh, I can show you this just there. I've just written this. I was just giving a training to one of my t uh, teams on changes. So let me open. Let's let's take an example. Oh no, this is a detailed version of the change that I'm getting into, right? Now let's say this is a major change, right? A major critical change. I'm calling it as a critical or a major change, right? Now. What was the first R is who raised the change, right? What is the reason of the change, number two? What is the risk involved in the change, number three? And what is the return of the change? What is the output of the change? Who are the resources that we need in the change, right? And who is responsible to implement the change, right? And is there any relationship of the other changes that are happening in the environment? Right now, let's move on to the first change. The requester has raised the change, and I'm going to call that as. Um, let me take this quick example and rewrite it to you again, just in case. Okay, request for a change. Request. I hope you all can see my screen. Request for a change. His an application owner is requesting for a change, and he's going to say. I want to upgrade my application from 10.0 to 10.1. This is the request for a change that he is going to implement it on a change to, right? 
So once that is done, he is requested upgrading the application XYZ from 10.0, 10.0 to 10.1. He is going to um, he is going to prepare for a change, right? Here, if you see, this is preparing for a change. What is he going to do? He is going to get he is going to get subject matter experts on the call. He is going to get application owners on the call, and uh, he is going to get vendors on the call, and he is going to get other teams that are involved in the call. For example, you have database team, you have network team, and all of that. Once the change request for a change comes in play, right? It is all this is not happening by the application owner, right, or the requester. This is happening by a change manager. This is the first call he's going to set up with the application owners and all of his people. Once once he has uh, requested for a change, this is called RFC. Once that is done, he's going to prepare for a change. Who along with the change manager, application owner or the requester is going to get database team is going to get network team is going to get application and application vendor and he is going to get uh, network team so on and so forth he's going to prepare what will these teams do on the call or beforehand what do they do once they get onto the call they will understand what is the reason for the change he's going to say my application has to be upgraded and then decided to upgrade this application uh, this is a new release for my application <laughs> makes sense they're going to do a technical assessment which means they're going to up they're going to implement the, te the test version or the you know they're going to implement the new version in the test environment they're going to perform the testing of the new release in the test environment and see how the application how application is working how stable it is right so they're going to perform technical assessment right and this is all being discussed on a call right so which has already been done if that is done that's when the request for a change comes in play right it's been tested, so they're going to list, the, you know, all these owners, all, all these people are, you know, on the call now, they will decide, yes, it worked fine, we are okay with it. Technical assessment, performing technical assessment is done. Now, change manager is going to ask them, what is uh, the risk that is involved in it, right? So, what's the risk that's involved in it? What is the business impact or the financial impact for this change, right? He's going to do that. Now, the next thing the change manager is going to do is document. He's going to ask for a change documentation, document the plan. What are the steps that you need to do? There are 10 steps. Give me those 10 steps. I want to be, it has to be documented in on the paper in the change document. 10 steps performed by who and who, which team, which team is needed, who's responsible for it. Once that is done, now he's going to look for the approval, the right approval, the appropriate approvals from each of the team who is going to give approvals to do this. One, of course, the, 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 you know, the application owner has requested for a change. Database team has to give approval for it. Um, say the storage team has to give approval for it. Anything that is required during that change has to be in a document plan. Who are the approvals? All their names, all right? Their designations and everything will be in the part of the change documentation, right? This is what I have written. Perform technical assessment. Number one, risk that is involved in the impact, a uh, risk and impact that is involved during this change and uh, also there's something called risk acceptance say for example there is something a slight risk that is that that could occur right there is a slight risk to do so but that's okay that is also something that during this call a risk acceptance is taken right a risk accept acceptance criteria is also approved during this call right so uh, then you document the plan you identify which are the teams who has to approve it then you also check if it's a, going to be a global impact or it's going to be a, a local impact or regional impact. Let's say a regional impact and the global impact. If there's a global impact, there's no change. Everything remains the same. It's just that you'll get the global DPs, delivery project executives and project global PEs, project executives and CEOs and CTOs. Just in case when you're implementing this critical changes, then you will get, get them on a CAB call, CAB call. I'll come, I'll come to that, right? Then you will validate the change. When this call is happening you will validate the change who's validating change owner and the technical expertise are validating the change yes it will do so we have already tested in the environment in the test environment it's fine you're validating the change then you submit the change right so all this is happening once the request for a change this is all happening on a tool in the tool change manager is going to question all of this once he gets the right amount of approval he sees everything in the change document then he's going to say submit for a change right once he submits these changes now actually change management team is going to 
decide another time. This mostly this is taken care. The first part of it is taken care by the requester by itself. He's just going to keep a change manager in the loop during this first call. He's going to do do everything by himself. Change manager is going to be maybe may not be a part of this call. Second time when this comes to change management team when he submits for the change, right? Change managers like I said they are mostly aware of such situations if it's a critical change now it comes to change management team this is the second level of check this is where change manager i'm a change manager now right this is what i'm going to check the lead time the downtime of the change when it's happening again i'm going to assess my risk and the business impact right if i perform this change what is what is the outcome of the change what is the return of the change what is the reason of the change right now once that is assessed what that is impact is assessed and risk is assessed then I take a risk acceptance criteria, which means if there is slighter risk also, I want you all to be okay with it. Only if you say all okay, the resolve uh, approval groups, approval groups, if they say, yes, we are okay with it, it's a slight change, it's, it's completely fine. I'm going to look into that. As a change manager, I am going to approve this change. Final approval is done by me only, right? As change manager only can do so. And only if he approves it, this change will be implemented. I'm going to mainly look into something called a backup plan. Right, this is a backup plan. I want the backup plan to be very, very, very important. I see if, in case, just in case, if uh, you know things don't go fine within the change window that is given to me, the lead time that's given to me, I will go back to what it was. Right, backup plan. Proper documentation. I'm going to look into it again. What has happened over here? This is the second time the change manager is going to look right approvals. Who's responsible for implementing it? What is the lead time? Do I have a backup plan? Are there any conflict of changes? For example, if there are two changes at the same time, and that's uh, now a change manager is going to decide two things. One, he's going to see if the other change that's being implemented. First thing, I need to be aware the relationship of the changes. If this, this is the application X Y Z that's happening, and that is A B C. First, I let me isolate the problem or understand. No, this is something different, and this is something different. I will check the relationship of the changes. Now, next thing, most important thing that I'm going to do is prioritize which incident, which change, sorry, which change has to be implemented in first place, right? If that is the change that has to be implemented, that has a business impact that's more critical than this, then I'm going to take a downtime of this maybe next week or maybe after that change is implemented. Maybe I don't even have a change window for, for this particular CI to be given at this time because there's another change that's happening on the same CI, which is on the same host or something like that, right? So I'm going to prioritize based on the impact uh, impact and the risk that is involved on the changes so he's going to check for conflict of the changes when the downtime is given by the application owners he will also have the list of the other changes happening on that weekend so he's going to say okay this is possible this is not possible right he's going to say yes i'll have to prioritize that one maybe not this one if they say yes no even that's important they're important just make sure if they are on the same uh, environment and now you realize that's not important this is important then you give approval this a little later once this change window is complete so prioritization is based on the other changes that, uh, sorry, based on the impact statement, uh, 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 sorry, impact and the risk that is involved during the change, right? So that's important, conflict of the changes, risk acceptance, appropriate approvals, once that is done. Now I'm going to ask you important questions as a change manager. I need to know this. Now, I have all my internal teams that are performing the change. I need to know, do, we, do I need a vendor? Because this is application owner, but the developer will be different. So I need an application developer who has given the new version of the application. I need him on the call. I'll ask this question, do I need vendors on the call, right? Not just application, maybe database vendors. I can ask this a generic question to all of, the, all of them, whosoever say yes, no. But I would still insist them to have more people who are more experts in that arena, right? So once that is done, I will ask another question during this change window i would like to have a bridge call open just in case if anything turns out to be an incident i will be prepared to have a major incident call and i'll have a major incident manager and in management invoked so uh, this is what a change manager is going to do and if they say yes that's a good idea mostly mostly for all high critical major outages there will be a bridge call that is open and change manager will insist to have a change uh, bridge call that is that is open over there and it's, it's a critical call a critical change you know most of the time in the firms that i have worked for and i recommend that as a best practice change manager should be part of that during the change even if it is not he is not there throughout the call but he has to reg keep a regular uh check um, you know uh, on a sanity check 
every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or maybe every one hour to see if everything breaks down. Everything is working fine or if anything is breaking down, right? So this is what a change manager, once change manager would do. Once all of these things are completed, that is he checks for the lead time, the documentation plan, write approvals, change conflicts, um, you know, uh, then you have a backout plan and backout plan. Do you need vendors? Bridge line has it been opened? Risk, risk and uh, risk and impact has been assessed, and everything is taken care, right? Once this is completely taken care, then he is going to open a cap call. What is a cap call? Now, once he is he's having the meetings with all other experts over here, service delivery managers, technical teams, uh, regional managers, so on and so forth. Now, once he decides this. Right. Once he's agreed to it, the last question is going to ask is, will it be a global impact or a regional impact? If they say a global impact during the cab call, now he's going to set up a cab call where all the DPs and PEs and all the service delivery managers, same set of people with more, um, uh, you know, um, uh, higher designated, higher designation people will join this call during the cab call with all the set of people. Then in this cab call, they're not going to discuss about all these things that the change manager has already done lead time change conflicts which is the one that's good now in the cap call or on the cap call they're going to focus only on the technical aspect of the change which means if the change has to be implemented then there are about maybe there are 15 to 20 steps in the change documentation have this change have this uh, the, have the change that sorry the change that we are implementing has it been tested in the test environment in the uat or SIT environment do we have the right amount of people to uh, right amount of um, uh, people who are responsible to perform the task within those 15 to 20 action items so on and so forth they are going to worry about only the business impact they're going to worry about the risk that is involved during the change the, they're going to worry about the change time that's given to them within that change time the whole you know the change window the change has to be completed right they are worried about the change has to be successful during the validation they are worried about the change failures and all of that right so they're going to be only worried about they're going to be worried about all of these things including the technical aspects of this uh the change in the change document right so the risk that is involved during this change what is the what is the outcome we are expecting out of the change so once the dpas and pas they all agree to this right saying yes this change is important yes we need to go ahead and do that if the the PEs and DPs, everyone agree, and the set of other people who all agree to it doing so, then the change manager is going to give a final approval on the tool. Now, this is when, once the change is approved on the tool, this is when the change is being implemented. Otherwise, the change is never, the change is not going to get impl implemented. This is why change managers are so critical. Regardless, the TPEs and PEs say that yes, we need it, uh, unless he has everything. The lead time, the documentation, and the right approval, and all of that. On, unless he gives the approval on the tool, the change will not be implemented. Once he finds everything is okay, that's when he's going to give an approval. Then the change is implemented. So this is the controlled way of implementing the changes across the environment. Reason being, imagine not having change managers. Maybe at the same time there are tons of changes that are happening under the same same CI. You don't know who's communicating, who's contacting, and you know they. They randomly do things and they don't have right approval. They don't look for backup plans. Maybe they have everything. They will miss out on some of the other thing then, right? So that is why a change manager is important to control those changes, right? Document those changes. And he's also going to say that, okay, he, he'll also be helpful during the, um, you know, RCAs sometimes, you know, when the change failure happens, I'll come to it. When the change failure happens, he'll say, okay, this is something that is lacking. The approval of the, one of the teams is not, um, you're not getting approval. Reason being, he's going to say that the, the database owner was not available. Maybe he's left the firm. So that is one of the feedback. The change, he's going to directly reject it because he's not got the approval. He's not received an approval to implement the change. However, he's going to take that as a feedback. That is the gap in the process for this change to be implemented. The next week or maybe next time when you implement the change, you will find the who is the next person available to approve the change and who is the right person in the firm for database team to approve it. Right, so that's one of those important things. Why change man? Uh, this why this is why change managers play a vital role. And I also said, change management is nothing but a butterfly effect. Somewhere some changes happen can tr trigger some trigger an incident somewhere else. Right, so they make sure there is no conflict of changes. Clear? So so guys, it's very simple. It's taken care. Of. One of the cab approvals given with the if it's a regional impact. If the regional impact is yes, let's say if the regional impact 
it's not a global partition in fact then you'll have regional managers technical teams you'll have say SDF service delivery managers and if it's a global impact is the same thing but instead of regional managers you have global managers you're a global change manager you will have a global PE you have a global DP on the cap call change authorization board right so this change authorization board is very important a change manager sets up this call with all these things given to him and he will open the call with all the executives and they all understand they give say yes everything is fine they focus only on the technical aspect they say fine then he is going to approve it on the tool once that's approval once that's approved then the responsible people in that change document who is who's supposed to do uh, that during that change window the start window of the uh, start time of the change to the end time of the cha change and the implement time of the change and the validation time of the change it's all segregated implementation of the if there's a change windows for four hours three hours two hours is for change implementation one hour is for change validation right something like that right so then the change is implemented now once the change is implemented remember the tire has been replaced by the mechanic now now it's the part of validation and testing now once the change has been implemented was the change successful which means it has the change the change has been completed completed now can you validate and say is it successful or not now a quick test drive is taken they say yes if they say no yes or no right the answer may be yes or no if they say no then that will be counted as a change failure you will open a problem ticket you will open a problem ticket uh, and uh, and you will uh, do an rca on it right why was the change failure uh, and immediately during the change window and if the you know the change was not successful they will have a backup plan i mean they'll go back to the original um, version what it was before right 10.0 was the original version they might as well go but during the change failure and you know if so happens that the change is not successful it can also trigger and say that's why a change manager is keen on opening a bridge during the change window and he's going to open a bridge just in case the application doesn't work after the change window the downtime was for four hours now it's been four hours 15 minutes users were aware that for four hours the application won't be working working but after four hours now this is the time we can open the application is still down it's a p1 because users are impacted now right now this was the change window that was given to us and it exceeded the change window it was a change overrun probably or maybe the change just exceeded but we're still unsuccessful in implementing the change so there's the change failure and rca will be open for it and um, they will find out why the change was not successful and they'll back out and go back to the original version for example for the, uh, on the other hand if the change was successful if the change was successful application owner is going to say yes everything is fine everyone says everything is fine application is working absolutely fine the way it has to be um, it has to be right then they're going to document the change call that as a successful change record the change and closure that's how the change is. I mean, that's how the change management is. Once the successful change is done, um, the change is successful and it's validated fine, they will document it and they close it. If the change is not successful, then they'll open a problem ticket and do a RCA on that one. Now, what are the types of change failures? One is an unsuccessful change, which means the change was implemented, it triggered an incident because it was unsuccessful for some reason. Validation did not give us a positive result, right? Second thing was to change overrun maybe we've got a window of four hours but we estimated to be four hours but it exceeded four hours and we're still implementing the change right it's another reason change overrun is also a change failure improper documentation when they uh, the documentation was fine even the change manager was not keen enough to look into all the stuff because he's not a technical expert guy what was given to him is what he ex he took that as a bible he said yes this is fine because all the technical experts said yes these are the steps that that are needed later they realized no no we missed we jumbled up the steps of improper documentation it's a change failure the other change failure uh, i was just thinking about is um, uh, there's no proper backup plan right so that's one of those things uh, if the change that was implemented and the backup plan was also not tested and now they want to go back and it's not going back to its original version it's another change failure right these are the reasons of change failures the success rate of the changes should be very very high because changes are the backbone of uh, incidents right I, I, I not the backbone I would say changes 85% of the incidents major outages today or even let's say medium to high priority medium medium to moderate to high priority incidents are caused because of the changes right so any some like butterfly effect right any any changes somewhere leading to some 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 incident somewhere else 
right that's called a butterfly effect that's why changes are very important change managers take care they take care of uh, change change manage, change managers have to be more more cautious about while approving the changes and all of that right change documentation is also the change documentation also has to be planned very well right because if the change document like i said if the, the steps that they say initially yes later they realize no that was incorrect subject matter expert says no what i thought that time was no that's that's a change failure you're, you're causing an impact to the business because you're implementing a change you've given you've got a four hours of your downtime and you know in the meantime you know as well as there's also something now this is where retrospective change also comes in play right they've given you 15 to 20 items and you've missed out on the one and four hours have been completed but you want to implement another task or another step that has to be done during this change they will implement it do you as a retrospective change they will implement that they won't do it for again cab approval and change manager approval change manager will give a verbal approval they'll do it then they will document another as a change another change an emergency change or a retrospective change right guys this is the simple way of understanding change management i made it so much easier for you to uh, i hope i've made it easier for you all to understand change management and uh, i i just wanted to take a little more time to explain about incident problem and change interlocks uh, like i said in so configuration management is one of the process in all the 26 processes is interconnected with all the 26 config management right configuration management how is incident problem change is in, interlocked simple if there's a change failure there's an incident that occurs right this is how they are interlocked because of an un, unsuccessful change or a change failure there is an incident that's triggered right how does a problem uh, problem uh, how's problem change and how's problem and change interlock in case of any unsuccessful change, you open a problem ticket and they'll do a root cause why the change was failing, right? Now, how is problem related to incident? Underlying cause of an incident is called a problem, which means there's a root cause somewhere. That's where there is an incident, right? So I usually ask this when I take interviews to people, right? So they, they end up uh, getting confused, but it's a very simple answer to give this. I ask them what comes first, problem or an incident, right? Uh, most of the time they say, yeah, incident first, right? So they say incident first, then we open a problem ticket to do a root cause or a repetitive incidents. Then we find out how we can avoid the repetitive incidents or how we can find out the root cause, root cause of an incident. That's later. So incident comes first in problem. Now I go back to the definition of an inc problem, which says an underlying cause of an incident, which means there is an underlying cause. That's when an incident comes back. Uh, then I ask them, no, what comes first? Then they say an underlying cause of an incident means there is a cause first and then there is an incident because an underlying cause only then no that no it's a problem so they are mostly uh, perplexed they are mostly confused so the simple answer to that is usually if you look at in 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 a in a logical way problem comes first which means there is an underlying cause somewhere a cause somewhere that is hidden and that's causing an incident that's why you need to do a root cause analysis to find out what's happening so problem somewhere triggers and that's where an incident comes in play right so how this is how they're related but yes when you're going through a process in any company in any organization where you're running an incident management if you're talking in terms of ticketing tool incident comes first problem comes later then you do a problem management because incident has to be resolved at the earliest you cannot do a root cause you need to give a break fix you need to give a uh, workaround you need to give give some um, you know uh, redundant plans something you know that can help them to resolve this issue or mitigate the impact and get back to the business quickly then do a root cause but somewhere there is a root cause the problem comes first incident comes later during with in, in terms of ticketing tool incident comes first because we have to resolve it then we open a problem ticket problem uh, problem record to do that same way in change, how in incident problem change is created, or rather interlock. Because of some change failures, incident can be triggered. Because of the change failures, a problem ticket can a problem can be uh, problem ticket can be uh, created, which means they're interlocked, right? All right, guys. I just took some time to uh, explain it to you, and I thought uh, this was the simplest way that I can um, explain it to you all. What is change management? I will soon do a video on problem management that will be even more interesting hopefully and uh, now you will understand what is change management you have already understood incident management once i do a problem management then you will probably understand what is incident problem and change it's called ipc in uh, service management right so people when they ask there's another thing it's, it's a little uh, funny stuff people ask what are you doing incident management you know what do you do in organize incident management or when you say service management they don't understand i mean when you say incident management they don't understand when you say service management they still don't understand you need to explain it to them there is 
a life cycle for anything that you do and you know you have multiple processes in it so when somebody ask what is incident management what do you do say you're part of service management team service operation team right okay guys you all have a great day thank you so much for watching my video and um, keep commenting and uh, i i would love to see your comments and if there's something that i need to do better please let me know as well i will do that all right thank you guys you all have a lovely uh, day ahead and uh, we'll talk to you soon thank you so much